Excuse me. Hello. Thank you. Is this thing working? It is, right? Yeah. Thanks. Um, so I was, I, was, I was chatting to a few guys before the class, and, and, and we, we ended up talking about the lab exercise yesterday. And I, I figured maybe we'd just spend the first five, maybe 10 minutes to chat, chat about it. I'm, I'm told, uh, well, I forgot to ask his name. He, he seems to suggest uh, my, my model solutions are somewhat slightly different from the normal way that you are somewhat used to doing some of these things, which is totally fine, by the way. Uh, in fact, when I was walking around in Scilab A yesterday, I noticed that, uh, I mean, there were actually varying solutions, right? So it's, it's not really like I was expecting you guys to come up with the same exact solutions that I, um, that I shared on Vula. But do you have any concerns with regards to the lab exercise? Uh, any questions, generic questions? Again, I just want to emphasize the fact that we, we, we are not really looking at, at least as far as functions are concerned, we're not really looking at the, the logic part. We, we, we are interested in the syntax, right? We're trying to understand you know, how to go about appropriately defining and, and you know, evoking functions, right? But of course, if you have questions with regards to the logic, just feel free and ask. Are there any questions? No? The second question. So when I was walking around yesterday, uh, someone used a funky, a funky solution. And it's, it's, uh, I don't know if, if, if any of you ended up using the find function. Did anyone use the find function in here? What, 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 what sort of solutions did, you, did, did the rest of you come up with then if you didn't use the find function? Sorry? Do you want me to beam up the question? So I think we started, right? Could we, yeah. So, so I, was, I was asking about the second question, right? We're, we're, we're basically trying to do a very simple thing. You know, we, we, we feed, we come up with a function, right? It says we come up with a function that takes in a single parameter, right, as input. And then what that function is supposed to do is just uh, spit out the, the string input in reverse order, right? As an example, we have Boohoo there, right? So someone used uh, the find method. and. and and I'm trying to find out what you know, other methods you guys use, those of you who didn't use the find, mesh, the, the, the find function. Sorry? OK, fine. If there are no questions with regards to the lab exercise, then we go back to the lecture then, is it? All right. OK, so so just, oh, yes? Sorry? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's probably one of the easiest, way to, easiest ways to do it, right? But I, I decided to. So there's, there's, a, there's, there's a couple of reasons why I decided to use the loop, right? Number one, I wanted to remind us that, that we could actually think of a solution and make use of you know, the things that uh, Sarah taught us, you know, and that's loops, to be able to come up with the equivalent of what you'd otherwise come up with if you use the find function if you decided to slice your, your string input, right? And just, just to, on, on the find method, by the way, we, we and I don't know if, if um, if, if most of you actually 
face this problem. But I, I was I was chatting to someone yesterday, and 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 we we realized that we realized that uh, well, as as we were defining, so he had defined a function using the find method, right? And and we we, we noticed to say. Uh, So we, we, we actually noticed, right? We noticed that, um, you know, if, if we did this, right, we, we could we were able to actually find what we're looking for, right? But if we if we actually fed it something that was not a part of the string, what would what would actually happen is it would obviously what the find what the find function does is it it returns uh, it, it returns a, a minus one if if the string you're searching for is not a part of the string. I mean, if the character you're searching for is not a part of the string, right? But what we tried to do was we we we, we afterwards tried to right. We tried to use the the index that we are, you know, finding in our string. Okay, let, let's start with, with with an actual positive case here, right? So what what we did was we we noticed to say this worked, right? This works just fine, right? So we 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 are we are searching for. We found the index that we are we are looking for because the find function. What the find function does is it, it returns an integer. You know, corresponding to the to the index where the character you're searching for is actually located in your string, right? And so we, we, we found our index, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to use the index because you're stuck as to how to go about using the index to actually find the string. And so we use the index. Uh, so we use the string. Uh, we use the string <laughs> by making reference to the index, right? That we found. To actually spit out the character, this is what we're doing here. But the the the, the hitch yesterday was that if we if we search for x, look at what happens, right? If we search for x, it it returns it was returning f, and I, I couldn't figure out why because I I think I was mixing up uh, you know the, the way that indices work in, in in Python and you know other languages that I've played around with. But as it turns out, if 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 you're searching for something that doesn't exist, we understand what's going on here, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's the simple reason, anyway, the, 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 the simple reason here is that it, it returns minus one, and so our minus one gives us uh, the first index when you start from the right hand side of your string. Right? Okay. All right, so just uh, another important thing before we, before we, we get to other, you know, these other things associated with parameters and functions, just just make mention of the fact that we, we, we should we should be aware of the so we should be aware of the fact that when, when we're making use of default parameters, there are a number of ways in which we can we, we can actually evoke our function, right? Um, as an example, um, I think one of the things we did yesterday in, in, in one of the lab sessions with the guys is uh, we we actually looked at We, we looked at the, we were playing around with the, with the print function, right? The, the built-in print function. Um, and I was trying to emphasize the fact that we know that by default, and someone actually, th th there's a number of you that already know this thing, but I just to, we, we, we need to talk about this. But we, we, we discovered, and someone pointed out rightly that the default separator for the print method is, is a space, right? So much so that when, when you, when, when we're printing one and two, what will happen is, when we're printing one and two, what, what actually happens is it, it prints one and two separated by a space. But if you explicitly use the, the optional parameters that the print function actually uh, gives you access to and you, you know, feed it um, a separator that is somewhat different to the default one, this is what happens, right? right? And we also discovered that there's, there's actually a number of other default parameters that the print function actually, you know, uh, provides us, you know, to make to make use of. And one of them, the most important one, I suppose, that I should mention before we proceed here is the is the end, right? The end. Uh, what, what's end, by the way? Is it is it a 
Is it a formal parameter, an actual parameter, an argument? What, what is end here? What is end? What is end? So here's the thing. If I, if I print these things out, we, we realize that we are, we are manipulating the default. We are manipulating the default, uh, the, what, the, the default parameter end there, right? And instead of the, the default value that it, it actually uses, which is the, the next line, we, we have two print line statements, but the result it's giving us is not really like uh, everything on separate lines, but rather on, on the same line, but separated by a tab space, right? So this is just classic examples of, these are just classic examples of some of the things that we've been using, right? That relate to some of the concepts that we spoke about uh, day before yesterday, right? And that's, 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 that's what we want to do, right? We want to be able to, to, to relate, you know, these concepts that we are, uh, we are learning about, at least in, with regards to functions, and be able to apply them to these other methods that we have used before, right? How, how many parameters do you think the, the upper function from the string class uh, takes in as input? Do you remember the upper function, the one that, you know, the one that turns your string into an uppercase equivalent of what you feed it? How many parameters does it take in? Uh, so someone says it takes in one, right? This is, this is really interesting. I, I, I don't know. Uh, is there anyone else who thinks it, it actually takes, takes in one, one parameter, by the way? Hello? We, we, we are, we are, I mean, we're trying to make all this thing uh, interactive. I, I, don't, I don't see how it takes in any parameter. It actually doesn't take in any parameter, right? Zero parameters. I mean, so we must, we must understand these things, you know. The, the square root function, the math dot square root function, yeah. So is the, the brackets that you put up, is that just there by convention? What's that? The, the, the closed brackets after the upper. Yeah. So you, just, you never put anything in there. No, so that's the thing, right? So he's he's trying to find out if if yeah. Well, so the 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 straightforward answer is yes. We never get to use them if your functional definition doesn't. You remember the the the, the function signature? You know the def keyword, the function name, and uh, the opening parenthesis and the closing parenthesis. If, if your functional definition, if your functional signature does not have anything inside of that, when you're evoking the function, then you don't feed it anything. So, yeah. Okay. I hope this is clear, right? So life gets, gets even better, right? Because... Uh, yeah. Sentence I want to make the whole sentence uppercase. I can put the sentence in brackets and say not upper. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it, it gets even better, right? Uh, so what, what 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 we've realized over the this well at least in the session before last uh, is is that you know we can we can actually feed our functional signature with parameters, right? But but the thing is that that approach is slightly flawed. Because it it actually requires us to to actually uh, already know like how many parameters we would want our function to receive as input when we actually evoke it, right? But thankfully enough, we we have uh, a workaround for that. So there's there's what's called the uh, um, a dynamic way of of actually specifying a parameter list. Uh, uh, by making use of uh, positional parameters, and, and 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 the way that you, so the, the way that you make use of this is, is you use the asterisks before a parameter that you want to be dynamic, right? So in the event that we we let's say as, as an example, if we we say we wanted to uh, print out, yeah. So here, this is a, a, a classic example, right? We we wanted to to create a function that printed out the list of names of all students uh, that attend any particular course that is hosted here, right? I mean, how would you come up with, with if, uh, I mean, it's, it's crazy, yes, we know, you probably need to have, uh, uh, to have how many parameters? Like, like 182, like in, in the case of this class, right? But, but what if, 
So we already know the number of students in here, and if, if we wanted to use each one of your names as, as a parameter name for a functional definition, it would be slightly easier, right? But if we wanted to apply the same function to the previous class, then it becomes flawed because we don't know the number of people that are a part of that class, right? So this is where this becomes helpful, right? Because you can, you can actually dynamically uh, specify how many parameters your function should take in, right? So as a simple example, uh, as a simple example, let's say we wanted to, to define a function, right? We wanted to define a function, and we wanted this function to, to receive a, as, as, as input a, ran, a, a random number of, of variables, right? And then afterwards, what we want to do is to print out each one of those variables that we, we feed the function as we evoke it, line after line, right? So let's say we fed our function uh, 1, 1, 2, 2, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. What we want to do is we want to print 1, 2, 3, 4 um, on successive lines, right? Um, and so how you get to use the you know, uh, dynamic position of par uh, uh, parameters is you start with the asterisks, right? And then by convention, by convention, right? This is just convention. By convention, you use the args uh, as your parameter name, right? You can, you can feed it any name, by the way, but just by convention, just like we use four spaces, just like it is recommended or not prescribed, but recommended that we use four spaces as we're indenting our code. You don't have to, you could use two or three if you want to, or a tab space, no one cares. But by convention, we are saying that args is a recommended way of naming our uh, dynamic positional uh, parameter, right? So we're saying we want, we want to print our parameters a line at a time, right? So what, what, what Python actually does when you use dynamic positional uh, parameters is internally it, it actually converts your it converts your parameters into a tuple, and so you could pretty much easily loop over it, right? We'll, we'll, we'll get a sense of what tuples are about just now. So much sense that you can easily loop through your, your variables, right? One at a time. And then success, successively print whatever it is you want to loop through, right? So much sense that if we evoke our function here with uh, one comma two comma comma three. This is what happens, right? If we evoke our function with uh, something else that's just random, let's say true, uh, feed it uh, that uh, and a string. And let's, let's, let's make it more interesting. We, we don't want people to think that it's just, it takes in three parameters here, right? Uh, let's give it a float as well, a double, right? So this is what happens. So you notice that it, it, doesn't really, it, it doesn't really matter how many, and we can comment this out so that people see that this thing is actually working, right? So, so what's, what's happening here is, is it really doesn't, like if you look at our fx function, it really doesn't matter how many, how many things you feed it, right? Because we're using dynamic position operators, right? Yeah. You mean in the method signature? I mean. This, yeah, well, say so it's just a syntax, right? Just, just like we know that when we are, so when we are coming up with a loop, we use the, the four reserved word or the four keyword, followed by the loop variable that we want to use, right? And then the in reserved word, right? Followed by what? What we want to loop through, right? And then we have a full colon. You know, so the things like the full colon that you put there is as part of the syntax. So the, the asterisk says is as part of the syntax, right? If you want it to be dynamic, right? And at this point, do, do, we, do we already see, can, can, we, can we already think of uh, a, a cool function that we've been using that actually makes use of <laughs> dynamic uh, position operators or parameters? Can we? 
Yeah, yeah, thank you. Print, exactly, right? And we remember with, with print, what we can do is, and we're doing it right here, right? Well, what, what we can do with, with the print function is, <laughs> we, we, look at what we're doing. We're feeding it like crazy things here. It really doesn't, I, I can, I, I can, I can feed it anything I want, right? I can, I can, I can give it sets. I, I, it doesn't care, right? Right? It doesn't care, and it just prints out my things, right? And this is a classic example of, you know, a pro problem. I mean, I haven't seen the the actual implementation of the print function, but you know, actually, that's its method header probably has, uh, you know, a, a, a dynamic parameter there. Is this making sense? Correct. <clears throat> okay, so as an exercise here, uh, and, and I, I want us to think about this now, I mean, because I, I, I just want to stand here and, 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 and preach here. As an exercise, if we, if, we, if we wanted to come up with a function, remember in, in the previous class that we had, we were adding two numbers, right? Do you remember the two numbers we were adding? We, we had a function that was taking in, uh, a function that was taking in a single parameter, right? A and B, right? And what we're doing with A and B is we're just adding A and B and having this, this function, uh, you know, print out the result and we, we all know what we forgot to do here. We forgot to evoke the function, right? Right? So when we came up with this function, uh, what have I done wrong here? Thank you. And we, we are learning, right? <laughs> All right, so our, our, so our previous, this example from the previous class, we, I mean, this is easy, right? It's, it's easy stuff here. Yeah? Any, anybody can do this, right? But what if, but, but this, is, this is fraud, right? It's fraud because what if I, I, I came to you and I told you to say, you know what, I want to add five numbers, not two numbers. I want you to, I want your function is it possible for your function that you have defined to add two, three, four, and five, right? What you would have to do is you'd have to, you know, tweak this thing and change it so that it takes in five parameters instead of two, right? If somebody else came to you and asked you to say, can I add 10 numbers, then you'd have to change your definition so that it took in five parameters and then you add them successively. But, but life becomes easier with dynamic positional parameters, right? Because because we can just feed our function what? It's asterisk, so it's double. We can call it star if you want to. Star args, right? <laughs> right? But, but the question here is, uh, so the, the question here is, how, how do you think would go about, yeah. Finally, there's a question. I was waiting for a question, yeah. Oh, you're providing us with the answer, right? Thank you very much. Four? Yeah? He, you, want, you want me to, to put my, my A here? Aha. Uh -huh. So, so here's the thing. Do we, we, we already know what syntax errors are, right? Do, do we know what, uh, let, let's call the function, let's call this function, right? And, and obviously we need to appropriately name it. We, we, we don't want to call it add two because it's going to be deceiving. We'll call it add n, right? And uh, the madam there says we, we do this. Let's, let's try and feed it one, uh, two, three. Oh, okay, sure. Outside the for loop. Yeah, sure, we can do that. So a question for us, right? Is one plus two plus three, three? 
Uh -huh. So, so, thank you. The, the, so her solution is, is perfect, right? But I was, I was trying to remind us that the, there are different types of errors, right? What, what we just, the error that we just made there is what? A logic error, yes, thank you. A logical error, right? And, and the, 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 the silly mistake that we made is we were supposed to have this outside of our for loop, right? Which is fine. Right. Good, good people. Does this make sense now? Is this making sense, right? Right? Okay. Yes. Print. Uh, sorry, excuse me. I, I mean, I, I know I, I'm, I'm trying not to be, to be boring, but at least don't make noises. Tell me I'm being boring, and then I'll change. But don't make noise. He's saying, what if we? I will change. I promise. He's saying. He's, he's saying, what if we? Where? Do you want us to define a new function here? You're saying we, we do what? In the for loop. I? I plus? Uh, could you? Could someone help me uh, figure out what is wrong with this? He's saying he's asking if we could we could do this, right? But what, but what you're doing is you every time you loop, you're you're actually adding your your loop counter or your your loop variable twice, right? which would be a logical error. I mean, this would run, right? There's nothing wrong with this, you know. But it's an error, right? It would be an error, right? But by the way, do we do we remember that? Uh, excuse me, please. Do, do we remember that this this is an option to what what she, she suggested, right? We mustn't forget these things. All right. Okay. Uh, so I, I mean, we we already passed through this. I was, I was trying to get a sense of whether or not uh, we know of any other functions that conform to what we just spoke about. Yeah. If you want to what? A hundred. <laughs> so, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping somebody here, uh, and, and I know there's, there's people in here who are really good at these things, and because I met, I, I met a number of them yesterday, I'm guessing there's a lot more. He's asking, what if we wanted to add a um, hundred numbers, right? His question is, what if we wanted to add a hundred numbers? We, the answer is yes, we'd have to feed our function, obviously, it's retarded, but we'd have to feed it 100 parameters, <laughs> right? One, 100 parameters separated by a comma. But do, do you think, I mean, obviously, you could, you could easily come up with, with a workaround for the function, right? Uh, you, you could dynamically create uh, another tuple and then uh, feed that, that tuple that you are creating, right? <laughs> yeah, you can create a list, yeah. Sorry? In the output. In the output. It, thank you. So she, she, has a, she has an interesting question here, right? Excuse me, people. Uh, so th these are all interesting questions. And I, the, the idea is we want to understand, and that's why I'm, I'm making this more interactive. Right? She's asking, what if we fed this? Because someone asked, uh, what about 100 numbers? And she, she just come, came up with a a very wild and brilliant idea, but what this is, what if we fed, do you think this would work, right? She's, she's asking, would this work? Sorry? <laughs> you want me to run it? It won't. But what, I think what we could, we could do, right? Uh, uh, what we could do, uh, and I hope uh, this works. Uh, 
What we could do is that, right? Right? So, so the, the, the problem is, the way this thing works is if, if, you're, feeding, if you're feeding your function that takes in, yes? And I, sorry? Um, so it's just a, a way to syntact syntactically tell Python to say your parameter is actually going to take in variable number of parameters and not just one. Yeah. So it's just a, it's a syntax, right? <laughs> Sorry, come again? Could you walk me through it, if we want? Do you think this will work? Sorry? No, no, I'm asking the other people. You clearly you asked, but I have no idea. But, but here's the thing, right? What if uh, I don't want to, uh, what, 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 does, what is range? What does it return, by the way? What does range return? What does range return? It's just a class, right? Uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was a top or something. I don't think this would work because it's a, uh, I mean, we, we are, I, I, initially I thought range was, was returning either a list or a tuple, by the way, in which case it would probably have worked, right? But it's, it's returning something else, right? It's a different type, it's a class, right? Hi. Can you just explain what the star does? Oh, the star. Everybody keeps asking about the asterisks, right? I prefer asterisks. But he, the star, asterisks. I prefer so many things. I, I was telling somebody yesterday that um, she, was, she was surprised uh, when, when we were doing one of the examples. She was surprised that I was obsessed with typing four spaces, right? Uh, when I'm indenting, I type four spaces explicitly when I'm not using an IDE like, like uh, wing, right? And I, I was telling her that it's, it's, all, it's all convention, right? And I'm sure some of us here have Red pip eight, right? The uh, Python enhancement uh, proposal number eight. It tells you how how to structure your code, how you know how to write code, right? Basically, to make it easier for you to easily share your code. Like if if I was writing things here and I wanted to share what I'm the code that I'm writing with him, I mean he needs a way to 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 easily be able to figure out what it is I was doing. And one of the ways in which we can do that is if we agree on a style, right, on a coding style. And pip8 is actually perfect. So the, the asterisks. The asterisks is just a, a syntactic way of telling Python, right, that the, the parameter that you're feeding your function is going to be dynamic. It can have a variable number of parameters, right, positional parameters. Um, it works if you don't use square it works, right? <laughs> Somebody tried it out, right? So range without the square brackets. No, just make it more brackets and square brackets, round brackets. Parentheses, you mean? Yes. <laughs> so, so, but this is this is all really in interesting, right? And I think what what makes this but this is this is oh man, this is really interesting. So what this what this no no seriously this is no no serious you know you know what makes this interesting? What this tells us is that do you know what the round brackets are? Do, do you know the difference between is it, are the round brackets tuples or lists by the way? What this tells us, and I, I I'll be frank here, I, I'll probably need to go and look at this. What this tells us is uh, the round brackets are I get confused between tuples and, and lists, right? Ah, come on. So the round brackets are tuples. What this tells us is that if 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 you proceed the, the asterisks with the tuple and you feed that as, as as an argument to your to your function, then it works, right? The the squares are what? I just said it, they're least, right? 
So, so this is, uh, th thank you for pointing that out. This is, this is a good find, right? We just, I just learned something just now. So, okay. <clears throat> but it, it, it gets even better, right? We, we can do a, a, a number of other interesting things, right? So instead of uh, feeding Python just uh, positional, uh, dynamic positional uh, parameters using the single asterisk, <laughs> right? We can create positional parameters using two asterisks, right? And what we're doing in that case is we, are, we would instead be, be able to feed um, our function upon invoking it or calling it with what? With named what? Named parameters. You remember the named parameters? When we're talking about default functions, we, we mention these things, right? And, and, and let me just point, point out something quickly here. The fact that the, the things that we are, the, the way this course is structured is it's structured in such a way that as you are successively progressing, life becomes a lot easier because the things that are coming are going to be dependent on this. When we start talking about lists, we start using methods you know, that are a part of lists or arrays, if you want to, and tuples and dictionaries. And when Dr. Dr. Darenzi starts you know, doing binary searches and all that, you'll be looking at some of these things, right? That's why we keep talking about these things. So it gets even better. We can do this, right? We can create dynamic parameters, but in this case, using dictionary type uh, or key value pairs instead of just single variables. The, 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 the cool thing or the easy thing about this is um, all, you, all you need to do is remember that. Um, I, I think let's, let's, let's do an example here first before, <laughs> before people get confused, right? I, I think it's going to, people are quiet, I don't know if they are tired or bored or something, but let's look at an example here. If, if, we, if we wanted to write a simple function, right? That takes in um, a, 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 a particular s uh, study program at UCT. Uh, I've spoken to a number of like engineers, people doing mechatronics and all that. But le let's say we wanted to take it, we wanted to, uh, to, 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 to come up with a function, right? That takes in the type of program that you are enrolled for at UCT, right? Uh, and the, the names that are associated to that, to that program, right? right? As an example here, a first year engineering program, a generic program, right? I mean, how, the question is how would, we, how would we use keyword arguments as opposed to just args, right? The double asterisks. Because what, what this does, as I mentioned earlier, is what this does is it makes it a lot easier for us to do what? To use uh, named parameters, right? So how, we, how, how, how would otherwise go about doing this is actually uh, pretty straightforward here, but uh, syntax people, they, 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 this thing with functions, by the way, before we, we go to the implementation here, the thing with function is, is it's all about syntax, right? And your syntax from a very high level is broken up into two, right? You just need to figure out the signature and the body. The body is, is, is the way that you think, it's just the logic, right? The signature are the things that you need to have, you know, as part of your functional signature to make sure that it conforms to what Python would be expecting, right? So, uh, we want to create a function uh, UCT study, right? Right? And what we're saying is that we, we, we want to say when we, when we feed it, uh, when we say when we feed it, uh, ah, this is interesting, when we feed it uh, engineering, right? What, what we want to do, pe good people, is we want to, to be able to do this, right? Uh, uh, I'm guessing some of you guys are doing some math course or something, calculus and all the fancy things. I, I don't know, 10, 12, uh, 10, 21, I don't know. Uh, let's just say uh, advanced, right? Advanced is always nice. Advanced calculus. People like advanced. So, uh, we let's say let's say we wanted to create a function, right? And here's the thing: let's say we wanted to create a function that, at some point input, if if there's a person here uh, pursuing uh, a course called engineering, which is generic, but you get the point. Engineering, we wanted to spit out the courses that he he's enrolled for, right? 
how yeah boy boy <laughs> look at this look at this I, I, I won't say how but this is this is really interesting right how we would do this is how we would do this is we, we want we, we wanted to, to print out the course right <laughs> Uh, and by the way, these, uh, uh, what I'm doing here, like the, the naming, I, I, I'm using thing. This is OPIP8. Uh, so, uh, so we want to, uh, to print out the name, and then we we want to, and I, I'll do it here because I know I read and I know about this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure some of you know, but I'm doing it because you're only going to get to do dictionaries when you start looking at data structures, right? So you look at sets and tuples and lists and um, and dictionaries. You know, thankfully. Uh, so. So what we are saying here is we want to loop through what? Keyword arguments, right? Uh, I, I hope this works. Let's see if this works, right? So the thing, people, uh, I, I hope we are paying attention and, and we are having fun here because that's the whole point, right? That's why we are we're in school here. Um, so what I'm saying is, what, I'm do, what we are doing, because we're doing it together, what, what we're doing here is we're saying we, we want a function that will, that will be generic enough to be able to, to print out what? The program study. And, and the, the variable range of causes that, that the person who's enrolled for that study uh, actually is taking this year, right? And this is what it's doing. And, and this, is, this is interesting because if another person who is, say, maybe doing mechatronics uh, uh, decides to say, oh, why, why don't you print my courses as well, right? Then we, all we would have to do is print mechatronics, and we know he's here and, or they are here because they, they are doing Python for engineers. Uh, Perhaps they're doing some the advanced calls, right? Ad, we we'll just call it ADV, right? Uh, right. What what this is doing is it's generic enough because it really doesn't matter. It, 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 just like just like the dynamic variable, you know, parameter listing that makes use of tuples. It it doesn't matter how many when when you when you. Pr w I thought I saw your hand. When you use the double asterisks, it makes it a lot easier for you to use what? Named parameters. Is, is, that, is this making sense, people? But what, what is not making sense? I was talking, and then you wait until I ask questions if it's not making sense. No, no, I, sorry? What I'm saying is, and, and, and I know people, what, what I'm saying is, it's, it's just the syntax, right? The double asterisks makes it possible for us to do what? To use named parameters, right? And, and just to go back to uh, the brilliant question that the madam asked there, we, I, I'm guessing we could probably do the same, I'm, I'm guessing here, I don't know if it's possible here. We would probably do the same exact thing, but with dictionaries, right? So instead of, aha, uh, uh -huh, 10, 10. So, we, we, can, we can actually do a, a number of fancy things, right? And I'm guessing, if this doesn't work, I don't know, right? <laughs> I'm just guessing here. Why isn't this working? Sorry? The what? Ah, no, no, no. I thought, thought. Uh, look at these people. No, no, no. Serious. This is important, right? Look at, look at the what? 
the, the function signature, right? It's not working because there's something missing here. N name is a required formal parameter, right? And we don't have it as part of our arguments here. Uh, if, if it doesn't work this time around, then... Uh, <laughs> Thank you for the ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> ha. So, so it, uh, uh, thanks for the previous uh, input because we now know that this works as well. Uh, so, so, I was kind of hoping we could just reserve the last 15 minutes to, for us to, to try and, uh, you know, think about what we've just done and ask questions. If please ask questions, if. Is this making sense? Why does it what? Why, why does it start with X and R? Uh, so excuse me. I, I'm going to have to repeat what he said because people were screaming and making noise. He's, he's asking why it's printing uh, X, X, R, R, uh, and, and then CSC 1010, don't know. Is because what we're doing is look at our implementation, right? We, we are looping through, and we're looping through a dictionary here, right? We are looping through it uh, using two variables, i and j. The, the i gets your key, right? And then the j gets your value, right? It's a key, key value, key value pair. It's a dictionary, right? So we are looping uh, i and j, and then we are printing out um, i and j here, i comma j. Uh, let, let, let's let's do something uh, fancy because we know that. Uh, we know that the print function uses dynamic positional parameters, right? At least we can guess because, because, because we've read the documentation, right? I, I, I was showing somebody yesterday that we, we know about this because we have read the documentation. And, and, and let's not pretend like we haven't read the documentation. We have read the documentation. It takes in a variable number of parameters, right? These are optional things. And I was telling somebody that this is the reason why we, we emphasize that it's, it's good convention to have doc strings, right? I don't know how many people I spoke to yesterday in the la laboratory sessions, but I mentioned that this is one of the reasons why doc strings are important, right? We'll be able to give people uh, uh, kind of like an overview of what is happening here. But to, to, to kind of answer his question, we are saying that it's printing i and j because we're looping through this dictionary. Look at, look at what we're doing here. Right? Is this is this good enough now? Does this make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but perhaps it makes sense. Sorry, there was another question. I, I saw your hand up, and I, I was saying to him yet, well, yesterday. Sorry, they are making noise, so I have to come. Yeah. I wanted to know about the dictionary thing. So the key, the key value pair. Oh my God! <laughs> uh, so, so one of one of the very first things, one of the, uh, sorry, one of the very first things I figured out when when I got into university for the first time. Boy, it was slightly harsh back where I went to school, you know. But 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 one of the things that I discovered late as as a student was that. It's not mandatory, and nobody will frown on you. Like, I certainly won't if you decide to sneak out. They just snuck out. Is there a way to say snuck out? They just snuck out. I don't know if they're, they just snuck out, and I, I don't know. You can yeah, feel free to go if, if you want to go. But um, we, we're just trying to make sure that people ask questions, if they have questions, and we answer them as a group so that as, as many of us as possible understand what is going on here, right? Um, irrespective of what your reasons for being here are, if you're just here for for the exam, or if you are here to learn uh, and to be, you know, to, to make sure that you're able to apply some of these things as you progress with it, it doesn't matter, but we want to help each other, right? We are all learning, I'm learning. So uh, he was saying the dictionaries. The key value pair. So what, what a dictionary does is, he's asking about a dictionary. What a dictionary is, is, and I keep saying it's a key value pair because that's what it is, right? What a dictionary is, is, uh, What a dictionary is, is when you're defining it, when you're defining a dictionary, um, 
So, so norm normally with, with these normal variables, it's just a single value, right? But, but with a dictionary, it, it has uh, a key and a corresponding value. The key is what you use as your lookup, right? And the value is normally the content that you'd otherwise be interested in searching for using your, what? your key, right? And the way that you define it is you. You, you have your, your key followed by a full colon, right? And then your value. Uh, and we'll, we'll, we'll get to learn more about dictionaries, but this is all so very interesting and so very cool when you look at advanced data structures. But what I wanted to say is that there, there are some things that, there are like rules, there are certain things that you wouldn't otherwise have to do with dictionaries. Like for instance, do you think 